This is Damon Dash, and this is the Dash Diabetes Network. I might not be a doctor, but I'm definitely in a doctor's state of mind. My thing is everybody has an opinion, everybody has a perspective. As long as you're intelligent enough to articulate it in a way that's not offensive, I'm always open for all kinds of dialogue. So me as a diabetic, I want to hear all different perspectives. And then you can assess what you like from it and apply it to your life. Today we have a real professional in the house. We have Dr. Ray, and I can call him Dr. Ray because I know him. This is a man I highly respect, Dr. Zarif, AKA Mr. I'll Break Your Collarbone. Join me now on this conversation I'm having. Okay, I'm Dr. Fareed Zarif. I, I actually uh, work in the field of bariatric medicine, uh, which means uh, weight loss and obesity. And I also have a PhD in human nutrition, so I talk a lot about what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. Um, I'm a fitness guy, so I, I uh, founded Funkinetics, which is a fitness system that teaches CrossFit and um, uh, aerobics and calisthenics and so forth. I'm Dr. Ray Urbanski. I'm an internist and research uh, oncologist by, by training. Um, I've researched many, many different disease states, uh, including diabetes. Um, was in practice in Philadelphia for quite some time. Uh, as I said before, I was born and raised in Jersey City. That's What's, my What accent. do you do for a Fresa? Fre so I'm the title? chief medical officer. Chief medical officer for a Fresa. Oh, beautiful. That's so I, I've been involved with a Fresa for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, as an insulin, I, I think in, among all the insulins out there, I think it's a very unique product that has a very strong place uh, I, I use it, it works, yeah. period. Mm -hmm. Best method I've ever used. So, okay, so now here's my question. I'm a diabetic, and the number one question is, I'm type one, not type two. Yes. Do you know of any circumstance that through your method, I wouldn't have to take insulin anymore? Well, in your situation, it's usually congenital, which means that you're usually uh, born with it, or later on, all, all ages can actually get type one. However, uh, it is uh, still a, a metabolic disorder. And with that, it can, uh, to a certain degree, help your body to work properly physiologically, which means the functions of your body to work like a healthy body. Mm -hmm. However, you still have a problem with the, uh, the entry of uh, the... I don't make it, my pancreas doesn't make any insulin. Yes. So, because there's people that, you know, will say that there's ways that you can, you know, every time I post something on Instagram mm -hmm. and I say I'm diabetic, there's always a lot of people that say, through these different methods, you know, doctor this, doctor that, mm -hmm. change your diet, you won't be diabetic anymore. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't care how good my life is and mm -hmm. all this, my pancreas doesn't make insulin. So I right. have not yet to meet another diabetic that's been cured. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? exactly. I'm type, type one, yes. Type two is different. I'm yeah. sure, right. Yeah. So, because you're still dealing with the, the entry and the exit of the glucose, the, the blood sugar. And, and you get um, the blood sugar is raised from all foods because the foods are uh, composed of, of carbohydrates, your fats, and in your uh, sugar. So um, when people say, you know, reducing in carbohydrates and you can, you can uh, arrest uh, this disease, you know, you can get rid of it. It's not true because even in cheese or even in, uh, you have other products that may be an oi oily product like some of the dairy products, but part of that is also carbohydrates. Part of it can be a salt and sugar. So uh, foods are made up, they're composed of different components. So type one, we know that's off the table. Type two. So, so type two diabetics, as you probably know, is a very heterogeneous group of patients, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Some have insulin resistance and some have relative insulin deficiencies. Um, but typically how it goes currently, and, and I may not necessarily agree with this, but they'll take a type two diabetic, they'll try diet and exercise, which unfortunately almost every patient will fail, because mm -hmm. right? they don't change that. Right. So then they'll start oral therapies and then there's a whole host of them. And then once two or three or four of these oral therapies fail, uh, which at some point in time they will, then they'll start them on insulin. There is this all happens all the time. Yeah. You're saying. Oh, this happens all the time. Yeah. In practice, I saw it constantly. Now, there is some thought out there that if you start insulin early in a type 2, you may preserve the beta cell function a little bit longer than you would if you waited for it to naturally burn out over the years by giving oral agents. As soon as you have a type 2 who is not controlled on, on diet and exercise, maybe start one oral and start them on insulin, uh, you know, maybe at their biggest meal of the day. And try to preserve that beta cell function 
uh, a little bit longer out in the person's progression of the disease. Now, that would be the traditional approach. Would you approach it different? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, because uh, um, naturopathically, uh, the closer you are to nature, the healthier you are. That's, that is not just subjective, but that is actually, you know, unambiguous. The closer you are to nature, when we eat foods from the earth, and we uh, don't process the foods like we do today, and that is one of the biggest problems when it comes to diabetes, that we process, refine, and we ultra refine these foods. So it's very easy for anyone to actually get this disease. However, if you take a person and if a person complies, that's a huge ghost there, but if a person complies, they can actually reverse the disease, they can reduce the A1C, the hemoglobin A1C that you were talking about earlier to about a 5.6 to 5.7 just by the foods because the foods that we eat are, can be uh, so, also med so medical. You, now, what does that look like that day for someone to be able to not have to deal with the insulin type 2 and get their life together? The uh, diet looks like this. It looks like, okay, I would take a patient what t from the time that they wake up to the time that they go to sleep. So, and I look at it, the entire catabolic phase, which is the first uh, 12 to 13 hours that we're up when we're in motion and uh, the food is being converted to energy. So I would look at the activity of that individual and make sure that I turn, uh, you have to change a lot of the eating process because when we look at most diabetics, practically everything that they eat uh, are carbohydrates. So how can we get a better balance, uh, equi uh, 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 a balance there? So when they, they eat, I would make sure that the first thing that we'll do in the morning is to, to uh, that is the actually de de detoxification. That's because in the morning is when we're most toxic. That's when we've broken down food and drink. And when we get up, we have the most toxicity in us to neutralize that, the simple water and fruit. And then, he's, and then you're saying because of that, you should have water. Well, water is the best neutralizer on the planet, not soda, not juice, just simple water. I got you. Then next, what we do is so that the person won't get hypoglycemia, you have them eat approximately every two hours. And this is, again, uh, protein and fruit. You're, you're starting to graduate, so to speak. It's just like following the sun rising to the zenith. So, so I think what you're describing is, is keeping people within a range. So, so what you do with your Dexcom and, and the Afrezza is you're keeping your blood sugar in this range. Yeah. So you're not going too high and you're not going too low. And I think you're trying to do that with patients with diet. Mm -hmm. Eat small, frequent me meals rather than what the government used to tell us, eat three big ones, yeah. right? So it, that, I think that's what you're articulating w with, with that. And, and it does help. You, you know yourself, right? If, if, if you're all over the place, uh, no, diabetics yeah. will say, I feel as bad being high as I do being low. True. Um, and so you, through the use of a Fresa, have been keeping yourself in a good range. And, and you're trying to do that with, with your diet. clients, so with you, diet. So you don't, eat, don't really eat anything that's gonna make it go too high. Yeah but eat enough where it's not gonna go too, too low. low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to just be consistent about it. Mm -hmm. So is this possible, this, this diet, mm -hmm. is it possible to have without like taking out all the things that you enjoy? Well, before? you can actually, it's just a reorganization of the things that you enjoy. It's right. about what time to eat and what to eat at that time. Right. And because we eat anything at any time, we're just impulsive. Everybody in this room is. I mean, we can, anything that you want to, anytime you want to, there's nothing stopping you. There's no rule, there's, you know. It just, it just, the thing is, so this is what I'm getting. What you're saying is dead right and is possible, but what you're saying is most people can't adhere to that discipline. That, that's, and I think you would agree with that. I would it, agree it with is, that. It's very challenging, yeah. especially in, 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 in practice in the real world. I remember telling patients, you need to exercise, and they would say, where and when? Yeah. Right? Because either they don't have the time because they're working two jobs, or they don't have access to equipment. So I'd have to say, well, just walk around your neighborhood. Well, I can't. It's not safe. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah. so it, it's, it's very hard. I think in, in, in theory, it, I think your method would probably work quite well. You know, for me, watching this conversation, you know, I think your health method makes sense. It just is a, a heavy discipline. So yeah, that was um, completely logical. Um, I definitely appreciated both of your perspectives. Where can people find you if they want to? 
Uh, Dr. Zarif at drzarif.com. Um, I'm also on drzarif.com, um, Twitter, and you know the LinkedIn and all those other. And where can people find you? They can find, find me on the on the Mankind or the Afreza websites. Okay, that's dope. Yeah. All right, so we'll be back to talk about some more smart stuff, you know. And uh, if I could get them to argue, I will. But I couldn't do it today. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to learn more about being a diabetic and being cool while you're diabetic and the lifestyle of a diabetic, check out the Dash Diabetes Network. Holla back. To those with diabetes, mealtime is really time to think about insulin. When do I prepare? Where do I inject? But if Reza lets you inhale your insulin when food arrives, even unexpectedly, so you can be spontaneous and not rely solely on injections. Afreza is a rapid-acting inhaled insulin used to control adult diabetes. Afreza can cause serious side effects, including sudden lung problems and low potassium. Afreza is not for patients with chronic lung disease, such as asthma or COPD. Tell your doctor if you smoke, recently stopped smoking, have ever had kidney or liver problems, a history of lung cancer, or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Most common side effects are low blood sugar, cough, and sore throat. Severe low blood sugar can be fatal. Do not replace long-acting insulin with Afreza. Afreza is not for use to treat diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not take Afreza if you are allergic to insulin. Get some dessert. Talk to your doctor before changing your Afreza dose. Blood sugar may need to be checked more frequently. Ask your doctor if Afreza inhalable insulin is right for you.